Good morning, everyone. Thank y'all so much for coming today. Can you hear me okay in the back? My name is Vicki Klontz, and I have a pattern company, Annie's Keepsakes, and I am thrilled and honored to be here today with Pineapple Fabrics to share all my little secrets and tips and tricks about my patterns and about the pineapple packs too, which save us a lot of time with the pre-cuts. Um, I've been in business for 26 years this year. I started out sewing when I was five years old. My mom taught me to sew on one of those little toy sewing machines with the crank. Did any of y'all ever have one of those? Those were great and very safe for kids to start. Um, and I made my first little Skipper doll dress. Do you remember Skipper, Barbie's little friend? I made my first Skipper doll dress when I was five, and never mind, Skipper looked sort of like this when she was finished, but I was so proud of that dress. I remember it was a mulberry rosy pink. I remember it to this day, kettle cloth. And so um, gradually, I just, I loved to sew, and my mom let me start sewing on her big sewing machine, and I ended up making most of my clothes. That was back in the 60s and 70s when clothes were fun, you know, mini skirts and all sorts of fun things. Now they call it bohemian. Back then it was hippie. It's what's, you know, it's, it's so similar. So I, I love the bohemian look now. This is kind of bohemian, this print, I think. But like the old batiks back in the 70s, right? And this is a pineapple print. Anyway, um, so then I went on to go to UNCG, and I earned my Bachelor of Science in Home Economics and majored in clothing design. And I learned that you could take a basic sloper, a basic pattern for a bodice or a skirt or pants, and make anything. You could just change the lines, change the pattern up a little bit, and you could make any kind of garment you wanted to. And so I've built on that knowledge as I've gone through and started my own pattern company to expand my designs. Earlier this year, I met Pineapple Fabrics at the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Festival where I was exhibiting with my company, Annie's Keepsakes. I was in my booth one morning, I think the first day of the show, and a couple of the ladies from the Pineapple Fabrics booth walked in my booth and they're like, Oh, Annie's keepsakes. They're like, we, we cut your sample fabrics for um, Andover. So we chatted and, and uh, uh, decided to, to work together. They invited me to do some design work with their pineapple packs. And I don't know if y'all have seen out there, if y'all have had time to shop, but the pineapple packs are so awesome. Dot puts together these colors. I mean, they take all the work out of it for us you know she puts together the most beautiful colors you can see she she changes up the value like we have darks mediums lights and I mean it just and with the cutting too it just takes all the work out of it for us so we can get on with the fun part which is sewing it up and then enjoying the finished project and so um, Candace gave me a, a few packs to play with and then this was the first, the first project that I did, the vest, the ladies' vest. And it's sort of a one-size-fits-all. It's adjustable with a strap in the back. You can tie it up a little bit tighter, or you can uh, leave it looser. But these are just the generous fat quarters that come in the pack. See, it's just a rectangle. And then because it hangs on the bias, you get this nice drape with it and so the vest takes five fat quarters and then three of the strips I use the strips to make the twirly rose the swirl fabric rose and I do give instructions in the project sheet on how to make the rose with the little how-to diagrams I'm so visual I'll tell you a secret I don't always read the instructions <laughs> and the first thing I say when I write a pattern I'll be like Read all instructions before you start. So do as I say, not as I do. But there's, I'll look at the drawings, though. I'll look at the little things. So, And also on my website, www.anniskeepsakes.com, 
there's a video there's a YouTube video that you can click on and it I demonstrate exactly how to make these okay um, and it's right on the the home page you can't miss it it's my big old hands so and so you can't miss that just click on it you can watch the video but it does give instructions in the project sheet too and also for the pocketbook the pocket tote has these nice little pockets and this is made up mostly of the jelly roll strips and then it has the swirled fabric rose which is also a jelly rose strip but they have this project sheet one Bella pack makes both of these projects makes the pocket tote and the vest so that's pretty awesome you know and it I mean they take all the work out of it they've cut everything here's the sheet that tells you how to make it and earlier this week they put this I don't know if y'all get their newsletter you can go to their website if you don't www.pineapplefabrics.com and sign up for their free newsletter and they'll send you you know once or twice a week the beautiful new fabrics uh, that you can make these things out of and so this was on this week's website or newsletter and I just I thought these were such beautiful colors and the blues would really make this vest up beautifully I think so they have I think a few of these still out there and then of course this is the one that I used for my sample because we all like a little bit of bling I think so that was the first project sheet that I did for them and then um, then they called me a few weeks ago we did a little conference call and they invited me to take one of my patterns and use one of their packs and make some a design and then put together a little program about it and so we brainstormed ideas and we decided on my rosy posy placemats pattern um, because one of the packs the Diana pack uses six and a half inch strips and then I had the Pentagon shape in the middle that you just sew those around and then draw a circle and you have the placemat these are pl my placemats are pretty popular because they're easy it's like a little mini quilt it's great for gifts and stuff so I started I got my fabrics which was the uh, Christmas these beautiful Christmas fabrics and I started working on the design and I realized pretty quick well if I use the Pentagon shape then I'm gonna have to have this big circle pattern too because it's asymmetric and um, that might not work as well but I taught this class in Houston and um, there's one of my students placemat she used some beautiful batiks okay let's see the next and then another lady used rooster chicken fabrics so you know you can use any kind of fabrics one lady used Asian and another lady used Christmas so lots of different fabrics go together to make this so I decided to instead of using the Pentagon shape for the center I decided to use a hexi shape because you know hexes are really trendy and that way the only pattern that I had to have was the little hexagon right and and it was the same basic construction okay so I thought well okay rosy posy placemats this is going to be a hexagon maybe I need to come up with a different name you know rosy posy what rhymes with hexy I, I could only think of one word and it's not so so I'm like I don't know if I want to name my pattern or not I'm, I know the pineapple packs pre-cuts offer us a lot of extra time for other re recreational activities but maybe that's carrying it a little too far and so then I thought well maybe maybe if I put a picture on a pillow so I came up with a picture of George and maybe that would maybe that would make it work but in the end we just decided to go with the rosy posy and keep it keep it safe keep it good so okay let's see what's next so I started I always make a mock-up of my patterns to check the size that is that one that is the same one this is the Downton Abbey Christmas line which also made up really pretty but it's a little bit big you know if you I've got this charger 
It's just you don't need them quite that big. You know, that would take up half your table or your whole table. So for this one, this was my first one. I made the hexagon the full width of the six and a half inch strip. So I learned if I just took the, the uh, hexagon and made it smaller, that's a four and a half inch hexagon on the left, I could easily change the size of my finished placemat. So there's, a, there's an easy way to change your size if you want it a little bit bigger or smaller. You can just change change the size of your initial hexagon. So that's an, that's an easy way to do that. So there's my um, front and back because they're reversible. That's the same front and back as this. Let's see, you can make them reversible. So one Diana pack will make two full placemats front and back, or it'll make four tops, and you can use something else on the back. So you could use a solid on the back if you wanted to. You could use another Diana pack. Um, we have, like these are the Christmas ones. You could go with a year-round print on the back. You're already doing all this work for the front and have them reversible you know, and have something different on the back so when spring comes, Christmas is over, you've got something pretty, you just flip them over and nobody will ever know. You could use the same green napkins even with them. Or you could use the solid. They have um, this, bolts of this out there that, um, you know, you could use that instead if you wanted to. Okay, let's see what's next, Brenda. Okay, so there's, um, there's one front. Okay, let's see what's next. Oh, you could make it round. It's easy to make them round. If you don't want the hexy, maybe you like the round, the initial rosy posy ones that I did. So all you have to do for that is draw a circle on a piece of paper. And see, there's your round. And the part that you cut out... That's your pattern. Okay, so maybe you're like, well, how am I going to draw a circle that big? I'm going to show you a trick. And you may know this, or maybe this will be something new for you. How many of you have a ruler like this? Okay, it's got the little holes in it. Maybe you've seen this before. You can take, take your ruler Put a pen in the middle and then a pencil in one of the other holes and draw like that. Now this paper isn't quite wide enough, but I wanted to use white so you could see. But that's one way that you can make a round. And you can get a 16-inch circle with one of these rulers if you want it bigger you can take a thumbtack, a string, and a pencil and just make your own. Or maybe you don't have a ruler, just make your own compass and do it that way. So that's an easy way that you can get a circle shape. Then you have a circle shape placemat. Okay, let's see what's next, Brandon. Okay, and there's the finished placemat, one side, the little hexy center, and there's another one. The little hexy center, that's the back, can uh, double as your coaster. Just put a little batting in there, sew them right sides together. Leave a little, you know, one, one inch opening or something on one side and turn them right side out and slip stitch that closed. And then you have your coaster to match. Okay, let's see what's next. Oh, and this is a way that you can embellish your uh, stitches. You can use some, this is a, a good time to play with your decorative stitching on your machine. If, if you have a machine that does feather stitch or even if you just have a zigzag or something like that, you can play around with your stitches, mix them up, use different ones. It's fun, you know, it's your placemat, so you can have fun with that. You could also do it by hand if you like to do hand work and play around with some pretty, cra it's kind of like crazy quilt. You could play around with some different crazy quilt stitches. 
Or if you wanted to, you could just stitch in the ditch or leave it plain. You know, you can do it any way you want. Let's see what's next in. Oh, you could sew rickrack on top. This is a medium rickrack, but a little baby rickrack would be sweet too. Okay, let's see what's next. All right, um, let's see. I'm not sure what that is. That's still, let's see what's next in Brandon. Oh, okay, back up then one. Yeah, okay. So th for this one, I split my strips in half. So instead of the full six and a half inch width, I have something more like a jelly roll. I've got a three and a quarter inch strip. I split them in half, mixed them up, sewed them in pairs, and then treated that as one strip. So you have more visual interest. And that's a pretty look too, I think. And that's, um, that's this one. That's what I did here. And so, okay, and then let's see what's next. So then I had all these fun little pieces left at the end. And you know, we hate to waste what we've done. I hate to waste time or, or scraps. So I'm looking at these little pieces. This is where I've lopped it off at the end. I'm looking at these little pieces and thinking, well, what can I do with this? Okay, so what's next? So I decided to make an ornament. The, um, because you press, when you sew the strips together in pairs, press toward the dark and that way the um, seam allowance won't show through on the light press toward the dark and so those seams will just nest up against each other so it's not too hard to match the center I covered mine up with a button anyway so it didn't have to match and um, and then I used um, the cutout because I cut out now I cut out a, I traced my hexi pattern and I cut out a couple of patterns so that I could have one pretty one, you know, and then one to play around with. But I kept the background of where I'd cut that out, and that way I could use that as a window for my ornament. Okay, so I started doing that, and I had just enough for the three ornaments that you see on the tree. And I was like, okay, how am I going to get my center perfect? And so what I did was, the next one then, I folded my hexagon pattern in fourths, and then I had my perfect center. I marked it with a little dot, and I could line up my center on my hexagon pretty well, and then I marked that, and I just put a plain back. I didn't try to, because I only had three. For the one placemat, I had enough to make three ornaments, so that's all I did. But I just used a plain back, and then I put a button, because my seams match perfectly, but you know, it looks pretty anyway. Not, they don't. But it looks pretty to have a button anyway. And you could put a little bead on there if you wanted to. And you could quilt them, but, I mean, they're just ornaments. So you could do whatever you wanted to with that. And I used a little length of uh, medium rickrack. Or you could use a gold cording or something like that for the, uh, for the loot. So that's what, um, that's what I did with my scraps. And there's the finished one. And then is there another one? There's the three. Yep. Okay, let's see what's next, Brendan. Okay. All right, one more thing that I forgot to mention when I was talking about the shapes. Another thing you can do is if you want more of a rectangular shape, just fold in two parallel sides of your mat, an extra inch, maybe an inch and a half, and then you'll have the more elongated version. And then if you wanted an oval, which is traditional too, you could always take a plate and then mark the ends with your oval. Then you can have an oval shape. So there's lots of different things you can do with your shapes. This is another version. And for this one, see it's the same center, the very same center. That's this center right here. And I thought, well, what would happen if I added another row of strips around the outer edge, and then I could make a table topper. Maybe, maybe you like table toppers instead of a, a placemat, something to put in the center of your table at Christmas. And so this, this is, I've just laid my strips around. I'm such a planner. Some, of, some people, I envy people that are serendipitous in their design work because 
they can just go at it and you know everything works out and I'm not I, I just mess over things it's got to be just so and now my classes I don't teach that way I'm my classes I'm like try it and see you know and we come up with some pretty fun things but for me you know I'm a planner and that's just how I think so I, I always plan out my designs ahead of time and so for this one I took my center and um, laid the strips around and then once I had them sewed up you just add another row the same way that you sewed the center once you add your row then you can lay that on your batting and then I decorative stitched all my seams for this too because it was big now what I did I just decorative stitched through the batting if you wanted to decorative stitch through the lining and everything so that it's um, holding together well what you could do instead of finishing the edges envelope style you could add a binding just like you would do we have quilters here so y'all are familiar with how to add binding then you could just add it because they're straight sides you know all the sides are straight you just tuck it in a little bit on the corners and and you're good to go so but I'm not such a quilter so um so I just did it that way. There's another way you could finish your edges. If you wanted to quilt through all of the layers, you could just serge the edge or um, edge stitch them, and then you could sew a pretty, that's jumbo rickrack on the edge, or you could sew a pretty um, decorative trim, like a pretty gold fringe. Wouldn't that be pretty? Something loopy or something. I think that would be pretty. And so there's the finished uh, centerpiece. It finishes 28 inches. And so we did a separate project sheet for that one so that people would know how to add the extra row. And then this one also has another project with it. But it's the same, the same basic concept as the placemat project sheet. By the way, you'll all, for coming today, you'll all get one free project sheet for coming. And then if you decide you want to get a Diana pack, you'll get another free project sheet with your pack. So there you go. Um, but this is the finished centerpiece. And one Diana pack will make one finished centerpiece front and back. Or if you want to use a solid on the back, you can get two centerpiece tops from that. Okay, let's see what's next. All right, so then you can also make a Christmas tree skirt. Now I have a secret to share with you. This is the same piece as the centerpiece, but I just hacked and whacked it. So for the, the Christmas tree, tree skirt is the very same thing, but you just make a little two inch circle in the center of your piece and then split it up the back. And let's see next. Okay, and there's different edgings you can put on there. If you want a country look, you can put, it, put a pretty um, eyelet edge, top stitch it, or put it, the edge underneath and understitch it. You can put some Clooney lace, no pun intended, on the edge, some Battenberg lace, okay? But this is the, uh, a close-up of the center and the back edging, and I love this poinsettia print fabric that they used. I love all of these fabrics. But the poinsettia, and some of them have that gold gilted edge to it, and it reminds me of the, remember the cloisonne jewelry? I used to get this when we were stationed in San Diego, California. Cloisonne, and they had the enamel with the gold edging and stuff. And somehow, when I did that binding on the back edge of the tree skirt, it really reminded me of the cloisonne jewelry, which was kind of fun. So I'll show you how I got my back center line let's see so when, to get my back center line an easy way to do it instead of having to measure like I normally would have across the whole thing I folded my lining in half right sides together and I lightly pressed it and then I laid that on top of my top that was already quilted and marked a line on my top and then I just used I think a little wood circle or a spool or something to get my two inch circle for the front and that's how I marked it and so that was pretty easy and then there's the finished uh, Christmas tree skirt so it's 
and then there's all the projects that you can make. So there's lots of, lots of different projects you can make. Think about, um, oh, another thing I was going to mention for your, um, your rosy posy placemats is maybe you might want to do a fall version on one side and maybe a, um, a Christmas one on the other. You can use jelly roll strips too. I've made these with jelly roll strips. You'd probably need three strips to get your width because it's, um, let's see, it's about six inches wide. So three strips, that would be three times two, right? So three jelly roll strips, but I would think a pack of jelly roll strips would give you four tops too, so there's another. But there's lots of different things that you can uh, do with these project sheets. <coughs> so, um, and there's the website. If you, when you make your first set of placemats or centerpiece and you're ready to make your second one, you can visit their website anytime. And in fact, I think today they're having a sale on the website. I mean, you're here, you can get what you want. But they're having a sale today, 15% off. But you can always order, um, they always have the newest uh, colorways that they've put together from the Pineapple Fabrics website, www.pineapplefabrics.com. So, any questions? No? Okay. Well, thank y'all so much for coming. I appreciate it so much. And don't forget to come up and get your free project sheet. <laughs>